Okay, this is today's job. This is a Zetter. It's a 4911. It's been sitting in here since uh, it's up here actually on the screen. 3rd of the 10th, 2012 was last run. Um, the engine, I'm told, was renovated just before it was parked up. So it shouldn't be a very big job to get it going. Um, building's nice and dry, so it should have uh, preserved everything pretty well. Nice little tractor. It's a one owner from new tractor. It's been on this, in this farm all its life. Uh, so you can see it's inside the building, nice and dry. So I wouldn't expect a huge problem with it. Um, just need to clear some of the parts out of the inside, so some of the tin workers in there and things. Um, cab is in incredible condition. Even the headlining is still in it. Again, like David Brown, something I've never worked on in my life, but uh, wouldn't have got it. It is a 2.7 litre, three cylinder diesel engine, about 45 horsepower. Um, it's a 1995. had, as I say, it's had work done recently, so it should be in pretty good condition. Let's see if I can get to the dash, I'm gonna have to do some cleaning. We'll see, can we uh, see how many hours are in it? So you can see, like all the tin work and everything is pretty good in it. Let's get around the back here. A little bit of a dent there, but um, generally speaking, a very, very straight tractor. So, we'll do the usual with this one. Uh, we'll make sure the engine turns over, we'll make sure we have on that engine. Now again, the engine would have been serviced shortly before it was laid up. So the oil should be pretty good in it, and um, we will check for coolant and get some fuel to it, I guess. You can see already there, like one of the return lines is kind of rotted out, and so we'll replace that. Um, clean around the fuel filler, and just make sure the fuel that's in the tank is decent quality. Pull the air cleaner, make sure there's nothing blocked. And... Um, We'll have a run through the electrical system. See there, that's one of the battery leads, I'd imagine that's the positive, but we'll trace it through. Stick a new um, battery lug on that. And uh, get this thing fired off. No, there's another tractor here as well. Uh, if you've watched the David Brown series, you'd be very happy to hear there's a David Brown here that we'll also have a go at starting. But I'm going to start off with the Zetter because it's a, an easy one and I want to get a video pretty quickly. So, let's get cracking. Okay, let's see what we have for oil. <clears throat> hmm. I love this a little low, so we tap that up before we do any more. Interesting dipstick here. Um, Actually treads into the block, which is quite useful. Stop the gun missing. And just above that dipstick is sediment ball. So um, we'll have a look at that as well. We'll open that up and see how we're looking for diesel. So this is the interior. Uh, just under 2,700 hours showing on there. See what other information we've got. So, it's a 4911, as I said. Wonder if that's the date on there, 1980. Could well be. It's got the shipping weight, which is 27600. And, uh, Maximum 25 kilometers an hour. So, up here in the dash, we've got, not sure what this first one is about, something to do with the PTO. Then we have got the gear layout. So this is a 10 speed. Um, it's a high and low range, so five over five. And, 
I believe, I'm just trying to figure out the universe here. It looks like we've got two handbrakes, one per side. The usual two brake pedals, clutch over here. Um, what else have we got here? There's a fuse box there in the dash. I think this might be the gear selector. But I'll have to ask the owner, so it would make sense. That. So that would be first neutral. The reverse should be on here, but I'll have to figure that out. we we'll have to make sure we get this thing in neutral before we try starting. I'm not sure what these levers down the floor are. Lovely mechanical action to them, though. Whatever they are. So let's check those out. But, um, yeah, it's a nice little tractor inside, not it's got a huge cab, lots of space in it. Uh, little hinges there for keeping it open in hot water. In comparison to the um, David Browns, there's a massive amount of space in here. Absolutely huge. Lift controls here beside me. Everything is largely intact in here, so. So for the moment all I want to do is just make sure she's in neutral so I can try to wind that engine over, see if it's free. So the intake system has screen here and there's several different parts to it. So you can see that from underneath and everything appears to be in decent condition. So we'll just close that off and move on to the next job. Okay, so I'm not able to get my big adjustable wrench in there onto the not the crankshaft and failed to turn it by hand so I'm just going to remove this radiator just cooling systems empty in way so disconnect top and bottom hoses we might flip it over and back flush her while we're at it and uh, got the mounting bolts underneath so even if the hose is uh, disconnected I might be able to move it back far enough that we could just get a, a wrench in that crankshaft so I'm good Right, first job today is to, I'll just turn you around a little bit, to sort out this um, primer pump. So, on the fuel system we have the supply down from the tank, we have sediment bowl, which is here, full of some kind of varnishy substance that was diesel. And then we have this primer pump on top. So, I'll just remove this and open it up. I'll show you what it looks like. So, very simple, just a plunger inside and up, but this thing has no... The roaring's clearly completely worn out, and not only will it not pump fuel to prime the system, but it'll also um, 
low air in so it won't run like this. So first job, take this apart, put new O-rings into it, refit it. Then we'll re clean refit the sediment bowl and um, try and prime the system. Right, hopefully that'll do the job. We'll refit it to the pump and see if we've got any compression this time. Feels much more like it and it's gonna lubricate it with a small bit of oil. Perfect, but it's definitely making you seal, so it'll do us. Put it back together, put it back in the tractor. Now, there was uh, some kind of a screen inside the sediment bulb, but that's long gone. But I'm just going to put the remains of it back in here. Okay, in theory, we should have fuel here now. I'm just going to turn on. There's a fuel tap underneath the cab. I'll just turn that on. There's something moving. Okay, it's the fuel bowl full of fuel. It's going to um, crack a line now and see if we can bleed it through. See if we can get fuel down here. And we have it's going to come some more through. So our primer is obviously working properly. Let's make sure that you're still... Okay, so I have fuel. As far as the fuel pump now, and I've got um, oil, so I was going to have a look at the electrical system when the radiator is out of the way, it'll just be easier. And uh, I can start to think about turning this thing over then. No, nope. this is one change that has been introduced since the last video. An awful lot of comments about me using my bare hands while I was working, so. I've invested in boxes of gloves. Uh, there was one viewer in particular that told me about the health issues he had had as a, a result of exposure to oil and fuel. So I'm taking these down on board. Thanks for the advice, guys. And you'll see me in gloves from now on. Okay. Um, I think what I'm going to do with the electrical system is there's an earth strap from here to the cab. And then you have an earth strap put in the battery box, which doesn't look too good, so I'm just going to disconnect the earth at the starter motor. I'm going to put my uh, battery lead on there 
and I put my battery inside in the battery box with the um, positive leaders here. I'll just clean it up and put a new lug in it. And uh, hopefully that'll do us. Just make sure. Yeah, I might put something underneath that battery box and I'm sure if it's going to support the weight of the battery. Okay, get started. Right, let's give it some power and see if we have any light. Neutral. And where's the key? Okay, so we seem to have a light, no matter what position the key's in. Let's see if she wants to bump over. Nothing. Plan B. We'll uh, hook up the temporary start switch. Right. Take two. Let's see if we can bump it this way. Okay. Just going to give it a little bit of throttle and turn this up just in case we get it to start. Right, I think that's going to go. I'm going to put the cooling system back on. Right, so one thing I've noticed is there's a lot of flaky, flaky rust coming out of the cooling system. So I'm going to take the rad and clean it. And it's a frost plug missing out of there. Right, I've washed the Radiator in several different directions, and I've got a uh, miss crud out of it. So um, I'm just going to turn it the other way around now and try and wash it out, see what comes out of the bottom. Uh, no. Let's uh, get the walls in there. Too bad. Okay, looks like we have a frost plug oh, out the back of the block, uh, back to the cylinder head. So, 
I'm gonna have to get in there and knock it in, but look for the moment. We'll just see when she start, and um, we can sort out that frost plug later. There was one here in the front of the cylinder head that was out as well. So, um, we'll just see can she fur it up for the moment, and we'll come back to that. Try I've taken cover off the side of the pump and made sure the rack is free in the pump. So um, we'll give it a swing and see what happens. So it's a runner, um, we just need to start out the massive coolant leak before we run it any longer. Okay, so I've put the core plug in now, it's at the back of the head so it's kind of difficult to get to, but the clutch has gone in the tractor, so it's going to have to be split and when it's split that core plug can be knocked in properly. So I'm just going to fire it up again now and uh, we'll see how it takes off, it hasn't started now in 24 hours. I'm just turning the battery switch. And we give her a crank. Oh, hey. 
Und dann hat es halt. Ja. Those things, the eyes. So I'm just going to have to stay out here and just let Linda running for a minute because the smoke's incredible. But then again, it's been sitting here a long time. So it's not really any notice. Now, if it's not leaked any uh, coons, I'm going to just top it up and order it and fire it up again. Alright, let's kind of shine a bit of light back there to back the cylinder head. No leak, so top up the coolant and we'll give it another start. The coolant has topped up and just uh, let air take over for a little bit there. Just got a bit of heat into it. But uh, it seems to be running sweetly. It's starting to clear up, um, literally couldn't stay in the building when it, when it fired first. It was producing so much smoke and it was really catching the back of my throat, but um, yeah, it's sticking over nicely now. It's even charging. So that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. Drop a comment down below and say hello as well while you're at it. Uh, so, if you thought this video was a little too easy, and to be fair, this wasn't the most difficult will it start in the world. Come and see what we've got lined up next. Look at what's next. <laughs> yes, this thing. Is really gonna put up a struggle. So yeah, working on it as we speak. And that will be coming up in the next video. But uh, speaking of will it start, I haven't got the David Brown moving yet. I uh, went back several times to do it, the 990, but I will do. I'll get the turrets pumped up in that shortly and get it moving. Have done a little bit of work on the um, major that was in the back. I managed to break the engine free and free the valves and things in it. So you never know, we might be able to do something with that, even though it is long shot, you need to speak to the owners again and things. So that's it for this video, see you in the next one guys, thanks for watching.